Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In the previous lesson, we looked at working with strings, manipulating strings, and often in your application, you'll also need to work with dates and times. So in this lesson, what I wanna do is look at the basics of working with the date data type, as well as some built-in uh, functions within Visual Basic that allow you to represent dates. We'll look at how to tell the difference or the span of time between two dates, formatting the date data type so that it's represented nicely uh, in various formats and a whole lot more. So you'll see that I began by creating a new project called Dates uh, Date Times. So please uh, trust that you know what to do, catch up with me, and I'm gonna start typing some new code in here. And so I'm using, first of all, this initialization my value as date equal to now and now is a special function within Visual Basic that returns the current system uh, date time from the computer. Now that we have that in a variable let's go ahead and just write that out as we've done so many times in the past. And let's go ahead and execute our application. And you can see the date and time when I'm recording this video, okay? So as I said, this will return the current date and time. And when we printed it out, it printed a fairly long uh, unformatted string, a default uh, format for our string that represents a date. What if we wanna take a little more control of how that's presented to screen? We can do so with a series of two methods. So we have, for example, to short date string, to short time string. Let's start there. So let's run the application now and you can see that we just get the month, day, and year. And again, this will use the location settings on your computer to represent the dates the way that it's common within the, your country of origin. Uh, so if you're in Europe, you might see month, or a day month year instead. Let's try the two short time string to just return back the time of day. Okay. Let's get a little fancy here. What if we want to add some days so you can see we can chain together methods this add days method will return a date and therefore we can call another method that works with dates in order to render this as a short date string as we did earlier awesome so that's three days from now, and I can, uh, I can validate that. But here's the interesting thing about this again, is that you're working with a date uh, data type. Date has built-in methods. We call one of those methods to add some days, which returns back to us another data type of date, which we can then call another method on and continue to chain the method calls together as we've done here. You'll see that often when you're writing code. So just be aware of that. So let's add hours. In fact, let's add negative hours. There's no way to, sub there's no subtract hours method or subtract days or subtract years. Uh, however, uh, you can use negative numbers to add negative days or hours, okay? So we'll do that and display what it was three hours ago. And I can validate that that is correct. What if we just want to print to screen a particular part of the date? We don't want the entire date. Uh, my value dot, we can get to, for example, the year, the day, the day of week, Oh, man, that might be interesting. Let's do that. So I am recording this on the first day of the week, 
which is actually not Sunday, it's Monday in this particular case. Um, and let's go to uh, just print out the month. Okay. And so, like I encourage you to do whenever working with the strings, you can do the same thing here. Just start going and looking through all of your options as properties and methods of the date data type and find uh, all the various ways that you can manipulate or pull pieces of dates out uh, so that you can perform math, format it, whatever you need to do. All right, so let's move on now. So we were able to create a date that started with today's date, but what if we need to start with a specific date in the past or in the future? Well, we can do that in a number of different ways. We've already looked at initialization syntax, but we can also use a constructor like so. And there are a number of overloads for this. I'm just gonna type in one that I happen to know. So December 7, 1969. And let's go ahead and just print that out. Yeah. Let's just print it out like it is without any other information and see what we get back. So here, notice that it created a date of December 7, 1969 at midnight. All right, so that's interesting too, that by default, Whenever you create a new date, it is at uh, midnight. And so that's by using the date objects constructor, but there is uh, another way to do this as well. Uh, so dim my birth date as new date. My birth date equals date dot parse. So we're gonna use a parse method of the date passing in a literal string. Now when we print it, it'll look exactly like the literal string. However, it is internally represented as a date object and it will have all of the methods that are exclusive to a date. All right, But that's a second method of creating a new date is by using date.parse and passing in a literal string, which might be helpful if somebody's typing that into a text box or into the console window to be able to parse that out and then do date manipulations on it. There's actually a third way and that's using a date literal. So we can do this instead. And we can use the pound signs to create a date literal, much like a string literal uses double quotation marks. Let's go ahead and run the application. And again, you can see it turns it into a real date object because it represents it uh, with a midnight as the time part of the date, okay? All right, and so I might also want to determine the difference between two dates. That difference would require a different kind of object that would represent a span of time. In fact, the object in the .NET framework is called time span. <laughs> uh, it's not a date time, but it does represent an amount of time between two periods of time or two dates. So what I wanna do is use the subtract method between now and my birthday to see how many days that I've lived on the earth so far. Uh, this might be depressing and it might be the last video I record today. <laughs> so we're gonna dim my age equals date dot now dot subtract my birth date. All right, and so let's go ahead and just use one of these methods. I'll just use that one right here. And so then what we'll do, we'll just comment that one out and create a new one here. My birth date, or I'm sorry, my age dot, and see date span has a number of different kinds of uh, methods like from days, from hours. What we want to use is the total days that are spanned. So we could represent this in days and years and seconds, whatever we want. And I'll call a two string on this just to be complete. So let's go ahead and, and print that out to win, 
uh, a console window and you can see that I've been alive 15,289 days. Yeah, so like I predicted, I'm feeling a little bit old at the moment. <laughs> uh, but like I said earlier, we could use some combination of properties and methods on the time span class to determine exactly how that translates into years and months and days, given the possibility of leap years and such, it just calculates all that for you. Okay, so there's much that we haven't covered, but I felt that these were common uses of the uh, the date data type in Visual Basic and the time span object within uh, the .NET Framework uh, class library. And so I want to give you the same encouragement that I gave you previously and, and alluded to briefly here, and that is if you find yourself writing a lot of code to figure something out related to dates or strings, uh, then you might just want to take a few moments and scan the list of possible methods that are already built in and available to you from the .NET Framework class library before you go off and write a bunch of code. All right. So writing applications involves working and parsing through data. And as we've learned in this lesson and in the previous lesson, the .NET Framework base class library can help you with manipulations of all kinds of data, not just strings and dates, but others as well. But this will give you at least a foundation to build on. All right, so we've been putting a lot of things on hold with regards to classes and namespaces and haven't have been very coy about that because I wanted to, to build your confidence be, before we move into the next phase of our work together. And uh, I think you'll find this a little bit more challenging, but it's completely vital that you understand these concepts. So now we're ready to broach some of these topics. Don't give up. You're doing great. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.